red flag has been thrown onto the field. The ref is giving various hand signals, but it seems that nobody, not even the ref, knows what is going on. Hello, friendly friends, and welcome to another episode of Gale Reacts to Miraculous Season 4. Today's episode is Penalty. But, you know, I'm not going to be vague about it. This is the first part, the, the last episode before the finale. And the finale is all going to be in one episode because I don't really feel like it makes much sense for me to record a whole episode of me reacting to each section of it. So I'm really looking forward to that. But that's the next episode. And we first got to get through Battle Team, which seems to be the Sports Day episode. <laughs> Which I'm really looking forward to, she said sarcastically, because Gail just really does not like sports. So Penal Team is described as, When one of Shadow Moth's favorite victims is akumatized into Penal Team, a fearsome team of supervillains, Ladybug calls on her own superheroes to face her. May the best team win! So, yeah, I think it's going to be a generic sports day episode. You got your team of supervillains, which are all going to be copies of previous villains that they took and your team of superheroes which are going to probably be uh I, i'm guessing kim's gonna be in there because he's like a big sports dude so we're gonna see king monkey back for like the first time in a like real way since his episode uh maybe we'll get tigress purple tigress and we'll get the pig ella pig miraculous I'm not too certain about those two uh but we'll we'll see just a set an assortment of heroes uh, that will face off in some sort of sports day, you know, cliche. Oh, they have to play football, uh, is what I'm guessing. Uh, soccer, football, just to clarify. But overall, I don't think this one's going to have much impact as a, as a standalone episode. I think it's just going to be the crew going out and playing some sports. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to it in in lieu of the finale which comes next i totally am not just going to mind-numbingly stare at it as i wait for it to be over so i can give my lackluster thoughts so that i can skip to the finale and finally get to see whether or not this ends in an enjoyably fun or an enjoyably frustrating way so yeah let's just jump into penalty let's go So I learned two things from that episode. One, Cat Noir and I have a lot in common. <laughs> and like, I feel him. I feel the lack of knowledge on anything sports balls. Two, the writers have absolutely no idea what to do with this show anymore. Clearly they've just given up. Absolutely given up. So I came in thinking this would be just a boring episode where they bring back the people into like, oh, hey, here's all the heroes we have and let's just like have them team up together in something where they all can be part of the group and whatever. And then, you know, uh, face a bunch of uh, returning villains. That was not what this was at all. So first off, you know, credit where credit's due. It was a new villain with a new outfit. It was just like seven of her and it was Chloe again. And I appreciate all of Chloe's akumatizations because they all have a beautiful design to them. Like Chloe always akumatizes into a, a beautiful black and yellow monstrosity of fashion. So <laughs> I always appreciate that, but it's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm done with it. I, I really was done with Chloe this entire season just because after last season it was clear they weren't going to do anything complex or fun with her and having her just be the reoccurring villain she's not she's not evil enough or fun enough when she's bad or evil to do that like when Team Rocket comes you have fun with that because Team Rocket is a very fun set of characters they make great jokes they have a great chemistry with each other and they sometimes surprise you by being somewhat moral like they have a line that they don't cross and sometimes they'll be like okay maybe we shouldn't do this evil thing because this pokemon's really cute or really sad or has a bad backstory or something like that team rocket when, when they reappear over and over again they're fun 
you anticipate it, you're excited, you know they're gonna lose, but it's an enjoyable experience nonetheless because they're so funny at being bad at being evil that you love when they're on screen. Chloe does not have that same energy and she cannot carry an episode like that. She's just mean, just repeats utterly ridiculous, has very like weird perceptions of what's, you know, what's going too far and what's not. Not necessarily like she's like more ethically gray or whatever, but just like sometimes like in this, the way that they win is by making it seem like, oh, this game's gonna go on forever. And she's just like, eh, that's stupid. Okay, I'm done. I'm done being akumatized. Which seems very Chloe on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's just like, why am I scared of this person? Why is she a good villain? if all it takes to defeat her is to just make her bored. So that's that's the first big problem with this that seems to be bleeding over into how they're going to take this series going f like forward in the future, is just Chloe is not evil enough to be a sustainable reoccurring villain. She's kind of served her purpose. They're beyond the school level insults right now. The other, but the other symptom of not knowing what to do with the show is the fact that they just put four heroes, all of them kind of different levels of ugly. Like I think uh, the rooster, who I have no idea their names because I mean, they all were introduced at the same time and barely got out one version of their power. And like, like it was just pointless really. Like they all just were there. So I, they're not memorable, but the rooster one probably was the better designed one, I guess, in my opinion, even though it was like he was just wearing a rooster outfit, <laughs> like just not a big one, just a, a, a tight rooster outfit. Capra Kid was next, though his face was just off, but I think that's just Nathaniel's face. Nathaniel's face is very different from the other characters and how his eyes are animated and drawn. It's more subdued than the big, like, big anime-esque eyes that everybody else has. Then there's the Toro, Toro Minotaur dude, who's just literally, it's just its just Ivan in, an, in a bull costume. There, there's nothing fun about it. And then there's Sabrina, who also has a very weird design naturally, because she's got her hair in huge chunks. She looks odd in animation already compared to the other characters. This just made it more apparent because I could see parts of why they designed the outfit to be this way, but with her normal features being as blocky as they are, it just made her look so s silly. Uh, like, I just did not like it. Like, the hat theoretically would have been super cute. It's a beret with ears, but the way it was done just makes it look like there's just like a plop of, of, like a circle on her head and it's got ears on it and it's just like why she would have been cuter with just the ears on the side but no they had to make a weird mass on her head and then ears because you can't tell it's a beret immediately because everything is the same shade of brown so yeah i did not like most if any of their outfits and their miraculouses themselves are so stupid like okay capra kid literally just two horn clips right here oh no how will anyone like i am so hiding my identity right now with these horns straight on my forehead no one will ever know that i'm the capra kid so yeah i don't think they really committed a lot of time and effort into those heroes. Their abilities were stupid to me as well. One is just no abilities can harm me, which seems really OP, but also seems kind of like, why haven't we used this before? Like this, the, the ability to be immune to other heroes abilities or villains abilities seems to be a really useful power. Like the party, let, let's go back to the episode I hate. The one where they had the disco party villain. Now imagine, instead of King Monkey making everything random, we just gave someone the Bull Miraculous so that when he touches them with his dance moves, they don't go anywhere. Now we don't need seven heroes to take on one dancey boy. We just need one extra bull hero who can just hold him. Like just grab him and just be like, 
All right, he's not gonna touch you. Go ahead, take his, take his Azakuma. We got him. Like, <laughs> there are so many hero, uh, villains abilities whose, whose powers rely on like, taking a picture, you're suddenly put into this different space. I touch you, you're suddenly put into this different space. I use this on you, you're suddenly put into a different space where you can't do anything. And the bull would have saved the day every time. It would have been the, the best miraculous in every case, but they used someone else who had to somehow finagle their superpower to work in this one particular circumstance. So clearly, <laughs> clearly they were just like, what seems like a cool power? Uh, just make him immune. Immune to other powers. That's his power. And we- nothing- of course no one's gonna question anything. The dog's power also seems like it could be uh, really helpful for getting Akumas if you can just throw your ball and it touches them and you're like, great, now I have your item. Crush it. Done. Capra Kids is to just make anything because uh, they really wanted Nathaniel to go back to being a illustrator without being a illustrator. So this time he just says a, a magic word and he gets it and it's, I guess it doesn't do anything. It just makes an object, which is just, I guess, a weird version of the lucky charm. What's the difference other than he gets to pick? Like, just magic up a gun? <laughs> no, you can't magic up a gun. This is a children's show, but come on, it would fix a lot of problems here. And then of course we have a uh, rooster who I guess can just decide to do anything. The, his power is, I just say, I, I do this thing every time and now I can do this thing every time, uh, which also seems incredibly overpowered. So uh, I, clearly there was not much thought in these heroes and it's just baffling to me that they were like, you know what, this one episode, let's put four heroes in out of nowhere. Also, Luca and Kagami and Zoe just show up out of nowhere. They're like, hey, we're having a class function and then suddenly they are trapped. And I get that the bubble was beyond more than the stadium. But still, that's incredibly lucky that all of those characters were in that radius instead of anywhere in all of Paris and that Ladybug was able to find them in a short enough amount of time <laughs> that Chloe's evil version of herself couldn't score enough goals to make it impossible slash go past the halftime where uh, she... Chloe could have won at any point because she could have just said, hey, the game's over now that I got a point, I win. So, like, incredible that she was able to find all these people in this short amount of time. And it turns out they all were useless, except for Vesperia, even though Vesperia was also kind of useless because she was used once in a montage where she didn't need to be used because the four new heroes were kind of beating the crap out of Chloe anyway. So, yeah, it j just... There wasn't a point. <laughs> this episode had no point other than to be like, we have four more Miraculouses and we need to get them out. I guess we don't have time to make four unique episodes for each holder because we have, I don't know, we got to do the Simple Man episode. Heaven forbid we miss that one. So now we'll just do them all, all together at once. They're not important enough to get their own. And honestly, none of the characters ever were important enough to get their own. So I guess maybe they're learning from their past mistakes and decided if they're all going to be as pointless as the characters have been so far, let's just shove them all into one episode so we have more episodes to do whatever the frick we want now. So yes, if you couldn't tell, I didn't like this episode because it just seemed like throwing everything at the wall and hoping it sticks. Which pasta has properly been cooked? I don't know. The best way to test it is not to just throw one piece of spaghetti at the wall every time to see if it sticks. It's to take the whole pot, grab all the spaghetti inside, and just slam it on the wall and slowly scrape off the remnants and put it back into a bowl. Cover it in marinara sauce that is, you know, for children, so who cares? It's great, and eat it, shove it. Shove it into a child's face and say, eat this bowl of, of totally fine spaghetti. Totally nothing wrong with this spaghetti. And with that analogy, we're going to move into the finals. 
<laughs> we're going to move into the finale of Miraculous Ladybug. We're gonna have so much fun. I'm sure I'm going to love it. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Let me know your feelings about Penalty down in the comments down below. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.